Hello YouTube. Welcome to the first inaugural regular guy knife channel video. So I thought long and hard about the first video for my channel. And I thought, well, maybe maybe I'll just make a video. It makes it look like I've been doing videos for for you know, 10 years and we're just falling into it. But I thought maybe we'd do a little introduction video. And as part of that, I'd be uh, doing a service on the SO640 here. This is a knife that recently has uh, found its way into my pocket a lot more. It's not been a super popular knife. A lot of faults, right? The ugly green and black carbon fiber, the atrocious pocket clip. You know, it's a washer knife. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit more streamlined than the than the normal tanky uh, zero tolerance knives. But I don't know what it is. It just it it that action smooths out with on them washers, and it just it just feels right. It rides good in the pocket. It carries well. You hardly know it's there. And I mean, look, look, look. Look at that spine. I mean, yeah, it's the it's it's the slimmer version, but the ZT knife. But I mean, this thing's it, she's thick, right? It's just it, it is a great feeling knife. Um, so she's spending a lot of time in my pocket lately, a little grubby. So we're just gonna do a simple breakdown of it, and uh, I'll throw it in the cleaner, and, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, how I expect my channel to to go hopefully here in the near future um we'll also be doing a little review on the uh pete gray's gray's precision here excellent excellent monster monster thumb disc you'll see there's one on there now this is a polished titanium version i thought maybe i would go for a more uh more elegant understated uh version and we'll be we'll be installing one of his zirconia monster thumb discs for the 0640 all right so i decided to come about and make my own channel right there's a lot of knife channels out there you know good knife channels they're just most of them center on reviews right and and you and, you, and if you're like me in the very beginning you kind of start getting the feeling that that the hobby is about accruing knives, right? By 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 filling up them knife rolls, by filling up that box, you know. The, it's about you know it's about stacking up knives. Um. And I did the same thing in the beginning, right? I, I, every nice knife that, every good looking knife that came out, you know, that I saw on the interwebs and on the forums and on the youtube videos you know i bought right i ended up with a lot of these just soulless sub 200 chinese made knives you know and it's not to say that the chinese knives aren't aren't fantastic they're great knives they're you know they got great materials they they good blade steels they're good knives right but they're just they don't seem to have that, right? I mean, and if you're just looking for a knife to shove into your pocket, clean the occasional trout, you know, break down, break down the wife's Amazon packages, you know, then 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 a lot of them are good. But you know, as an a collector, as an enthusiast, as a somebody who 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 really appreciates kind of the the feel and the fit and finish of your knife, they're just they're not going to do it for you. You know, and, and I ended up with a lot of knives that I no longer have because they've since been traded or given or sold and generally mostly given because I hate to, hate to, hate to sell a knife, but, you know, they just, they just end up going away. And so, you know, I, I kind of learned to, 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 
over time to kind of ignore the background noise, if you were, and just really start looking for knives that I knew I was going to appreciate, knives that I was going to like over time, knives that were not necessarily going to going to be, you know, the rarest of the rare, but knives that were going to grow on me and, and, and knives that I was going to want to have, you know, in my pocket and in my hand. So one of the things that I wanted to do and or one of my goals when creating a channel here was to ensure that I didn't review anything that I didn't pay for. I think that that a large portion of of my feelings towards a knife are, are dictated by 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 what I paid for, right? You know, you spend five hundred dollars on a knife. You want to see five hundred dollars worth of knife. You spend, you know, a hundred dollars on a knife. You want a hundred dollars worth of knife. And I think, you know, unless I made that sacrifice, unless unless that was money out of my account and out of my pocket, I don't feel like you can give a fair review of, of a product. Now that's just me. That's not taking away anything from. You know, channels like, like Metal Complex or Nick Shabazz or Slicey, you know, any, any of the other channels out there, right? They all do a fantastic job. They all give us a heads up. I mean, personally, I have the, the three knives that I will be buried with, I was able to get a hold of because of heads up, you know, from, from Metal Complex here on YouTube. So, so I'm not, I'm not. Do, taking away anything from 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 them and what what they do, they do an absolutely fantastic job. It's just to me, there's a lot more to the hobby than than just buying knives, right? It gets too expensive, or you know, for 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 the bigger purchases, or it it, it you end up with a bunch of you know just just soulless knives, and instead of having that one or that two or those those knives that are top of your collection. You know, you're 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 ending up with with just knives, right? With just knife roll fillers. And there there's more to it, right? So so I like to modify my knives, right? I do a lot of different modifications, acid washing, I can you know I'll, I'll, there there's a million good tutorials on how to on how to uh, anodize titanium on YouTube, you know, with nine volt batteries. You know, there there there's a lot of things that can be done. Um so so you know, I like to make my knives mine. And, you know, and, and then I, I, I save up for the big ones, right? I save up for the big scores. You know, I save up for the for the Henders and the Medfords and, and and patiently wait for them to drop sometimes. <laughs> maybe maybe not always so patiently. Right? But then that way it keeps you know, my collection's not huge, right? But then what I do have in my collection are are, are knives that I'm truly proud of, knives that, that, that I feel a connection to. That, that speak to me, you know, that be, I worked hard for them. I waited a long time for them, you know, and then, and then I was able to, 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 to fortunately pick those up, you know, and, you know, I, like the channel says, right, this is the regular guy knife channel. This is the, the, this is the channel for guys that got to save up, you know, you gotta, you know, if it's if it's anything more than a hundred bucks, that that shit's waiting for for a few paychecks, right? You know, the wife is awesome, but but if I can't uh, drive it, eat it, you know, sleep with it, then then I have to wait, right? I have to save up. But but patience and persistence pays off, you know. I've I've been able to get a hold of, you know. The Medvirds I've wanted, the Hinderer I wanted, you know, just the knives that generally that I've wanted, just by waiting a little bit and saving up, you know, those knives become available and, and, and I'm able to get one. Uh, one thing you won't see here on, on my channel, you know, if it makes it past this video, right, is we won't be 
unless it's just something extremely egregious, right? We 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 won't be slamming on other 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 knife makers. I know uh, just recently there's been some some talk about uh, 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 you know about Mr. Hinderer, right? But that's I've never had anything but positive but positive experiences with 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 Rick Hinderer or or his company or his, his even his his uh his customer service. I mean I've I've never had issues with them. Now, granted my XM18 is absolutely 100% perfect. So there was no need to go to him with a customer service issue, but I'm a firm believer that that you know we're we're really quick to to jump on the interwebs and 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 start typing down in there all of our nasty comments when something's wrong but but we we were never we're very slow to convey when something is done right so so uh, the few interactions i've had with that company it was essentially to send them a letter thanking them you know for my knife and 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 just how nice it was and, and how good of a job I thought they did. So, of course, they're going to respond to something like that positively. Um, in the past, a few few 10 or so years ago, I was in the market for a really nice knife that was um, that would mark a, a significant part in my life at that, at, at, at that time. I could not find an XM18 to save, save my life. I ended up going with a Chris Reeve, uh, a SEBI instead. Uh, fantastic knife, fantastic company, but I had written an email to uh, to Hinderer, and I, I let them know what I was looking for, and and in, if if at all possible, if you know that's when they were still retailing a lot of knives from their sites, if they if they had one available to think of me, um, they sent me back a really nice you know email asking for my address, um, because they they unfortunately did not have have anything available but but they wanted to send me some stickers and some swag no big deal so i sent them my home address you know and 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 a week later i, I received a box that was full of stickers um and 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 one of their titanium pens i mean a hundred dollar pen who does that you know so so i i guess i've never had a reason to deal with that company on its bad side but it, but it's always i've always had a good experience so so Basically, my point is, is, is you never know, and and I don't ever want to, I don't want to get involved in, in in anything that could cost a, a company its business, especially if it's an American company. Um, there are there are companies that I that I will no longer have anything to do with. Um, rest assured, you will you will never see a review of a Max Ace product or or Midnight Cat Studios on on my channel. Um. The, they make a decently, they make a decent knife, right? Of decent quality, um, at a good price. Unfortunately, the hardware for those those knives are 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 after, is, is absolutely soft garbage, so, absolute garbage. Um, the Bally songs, you know, that are sold with the trainer blade, those those things are meant to be taken apart, right? You're switching out between the live blade and the and the and the trainer blade, right? That that hardware has to at least be able to withstand that. But but no, and it, and it's not even the head stripping out; it's threads pulling off, threads pulling out of the sex bolts on the pivot. They're just their hardware is absolutely garbage, and their their customer service uh, is non-existent, absolutely non-existent. So so yes, they make a decent knife, but but yeah, your mileage may vary, and 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 <laughs> definitely I would buy or beware, but. Moving on. So one of the things that I, my focus for this channel or my goals for this channel is, is I want to cover topics that, that are, that are in the hobby, but, but, but don't necessarily revolve around, you know, spending money or buying something new, um, sharpening, uh, just general maintenance, the disassembly, um, Growing up, you know, the thing that would that grabbed me and really got me interested in knives was, was Blade Magazine there at the, at the in, at the magazine stand in the in the in the supermarket, right? And and you'd see that cover with that that uh, Butch Valaton automatic on the you know on the cover, this beautiful, gorgeous knife. And then you'd have three or four pages just dedicated to 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 the knife, the the maker's philosophy philosophy behind creating that knife 
and and about the maker i mean you you learned so much about that knife and you learned so much about that maker right and you became fans of makers based on that right those articles but but nowadays it's just it's almost like the, the knives are faceless right you don't know the maker other than the bad things you've heard or or customer service issues they've had you know there's there's uh, well greg medford being being the exception right that dude's all over youtube talking about his knives talking about his politics talking about his customer service right they're they're uh, other than greg medford i mean what who do what do we know you know about butch valaton what do we you know what do we know what what do we know about bob trizola i mean there's there's these these all these magnificent makers out there and and i bring butch up because he's he's passed and he's no longer with us but we just can't let that happen right we we can't have these 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 amazing pieces of mechanical art without knowing anything about about the about the design philosophy about the about the people who put these together right and and to me that's it that's interesting right because it's not just a tool right it's it's more than a tool right it's functional art right but 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 we care i care right about the soul that that, that went into it and so that's that's one of the things that I've, i'm kind of hoping to accomplish with that channel or with this channel um the other big thing being i i really there's a lot of topics that I've searched, you know, high and low for on 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 YouTube that I would really that I, that, that I really didn't get answers to. Um, assembly disassembly tools, you know, obviously they've got I've got a few here. Um, you know, other 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 than the ubiquitous, you know, you know, short fat weehaw driver, and the and the pack of the. And the and you know and the Weehaw bit set right, we all know about those right. But there's there's a lot more tools out there. There's a lot more options as far as tools go, and maybe there's better options for you. But there's a there's a lot more out there. And and I know I just you know talked all this crap about Max Ace, and I've got one of their drivers here. This is literally the only Max Ace products that I actually enjoy. Um, and it's got very, it's got little, there's almost no hardware to it. So, so maybe that's, that's why I like it and it works out so well. Um, so yeah, but you know, I, I'm, I'm really hoping that we can, we can cover, cover topics that, that are of interest to everyone, but also are, 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 you know germane to the hobby right there there's more to 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 this hobby than just than just buying knives right i'm a you know hopefully hopefully you guys will see as 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 time comes right i'm i am a i am a scaleaholic right i love scaling knives right i love running new scales on my on my knives and and because i'm also <laughs> I'm also a, a you know a spider co collector. Um, there's a big market out there, especially on sites like Etsy. You know, with all these little makers that make an extremely nice and gorgeous, beautiful prod products, and you know, I'm hoping to do some reviews on those and bring them to you. Um, yeah, you know, there's 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 a lot out there in this world that 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 doesn't doesn't require you to 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 buy a five hundred dollar knife every two weeks and you know you can you can enjoy this hobby while while still spending money on on significant knives right you know in your collection those those, those unicorns right the knives that you're going to be buried with right um and and you know, I'm, I'm hoping to cover other subjects besides just 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 the purchasing of knives or the 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 FOMO engendering, right? This is the greatest EDC knife made, only two hundred dollar, you know, type type stuff. I don't I, I don't really want to do that. You know, if 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 I grow big enough, right, 
you know, or know well known enough, I, I would I would really like to be doing interviews and and, and interviewing makers and interviewing these guys and 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 kind of getting their point of view on on their blades. I mean, a lot of these knives, you know, they're they're you know they're they're all, a lot of them, some all of them pretty much, right? Are designed by somebody, right? And they had a reason for making them the way they are. They had a they had a design philosophy. They had a goal when they designed those. And maybe sometimes knives are are, are a little bit in, uh, misunderstood because maybe we don't fully see that that maker's vision, you know. And and maybe hearing directly from the source, it'll it'll help us understand those knives a little bit better. Um, you know, I mean. I, I think that's it, that's a fascinating part of this hobby, and I, I also believe that it's a part of this hobby that we've we've lost, you know, since we've we've switched over to the to the social media, to the YouTubes, and we've really lost our our magazine media. You know, there there's nothing like a four page article and a, and a and a glossy magazine cover, right? I mean, that's that shit grabbed you. So, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm hoping to fill a little bit of that into into these into these videos when when more videos come um i've got a lot of good good content just sitting here on my desk that i've been putting off uh doing because because i think it would make for for great videos um, we'll do some sharpening videos we'll do some scale reviews we'll do some knife modification videos um i've got some from any big fans up there of the of the ts prof products i have a i have a cadet um, I've got some some really nice some some cool modifications I've done to mine that that are greatly uh, uh, at least in my in in my estimate have improved its abilities, um, especially where where uh, uh, stropping is concerned, especially with the with the with the microfiber strops and stuff. I've done some modifications to to improve the I guess the feel of that would be would be the right word. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I, I think, uh, I think I'll be doing, doing a few videos a week, maybe one video a week to, to start out because this is literally the first time, my first video on YouTube. Um, at least the one that I'll admit to, I think there's a YouTube video out there of me shit face drunks, karaoke purple rain, but, but you'll have to find that one on your own. So yeah, so today we got the I got the 640 here, the 0640. Um this is a knife I I I saw and I wanted and I purchased it and and then I read the reviews. Um I hadn't received it in the mail yet and I had already ordered myself a, a Lynch clip. I had deep carry clip. I had already uh found the the great precision site there and ordered me a monster monster thumb disc and went over to uh, sharp dress knives trying to find some of the uh the uh appliques outer scales i don't know what i don't know what we're calling these things right they're they're the they're not an inlay they're we'll call them appliques right the appliques because everything i read said that that black and green carbon fiber was absolutely hideous right absolutely hideous well i didn't find it right they were sold out. They're still sold out. They'll be sold out for, for who knows how long. So essentially, I got my 640. I changed out the pocket clip. I changed out the thumb, thumb disc. You know, I played with it a little bit. And then I threw it in my knife roll and forgot about it, right? Um, well, it's been coming out a lot more, right? It's a good knife. It has really grown on me. And, and oddly enough, I, I actually find these scales kind of subscales, applique thingies. I, I find them attractive. You know, I, I think they look good. I think they're a good fit for the for the knife. I think they the 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 color combo of that green and black, you know, it does the knife justice. So so I'm fine with them. Um the other the other thing that was deemed as necessary required, you know, equipment was pocket clips, right? The 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 original ZT clip was deemed as being atrocious. Um, I disagree. Um, I am going to be taking the Lynch clip. Will not be going back on this knife. Um, it's a great clip, as all Lynch clips are. It's just some knives 
are just not ergonomically suited for for one of one of these deep carry clips it 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 feels wrong it disrupts the overall ergonomics of the knife you know you can you can not necessarily a hot spot but it's disconcerting because you're not getting that full that full grasp of the of, of the knife like you should be able to it just it feels weird it's you know it's nothing to the quality of the clip nothing with the quality of mr lynch's work but but it's it's not going back on the knife you know, I had no issues whatsoever with, with the stock clip. You know, it, it, it's a little weak, you know, but it's a heavy knife. It's not jumping out of my pocket. Um, but you don't feel this clip at all, right? You, you don't even know what's there. It's got just a minimum bit of kick up there at the tip. You're not getting any hot spots. It's just, it disappears in the hand, you know? And I think, and, and it really, it complements the overall look of the knife. I don't, I don't. I don't see a downside to it. I mean, I guess if you're doing cartwheels and jogging pants and you need that knife to stay put, then probably not the clip for you. And maybe one of the lynches is, is going to be going to be better for you. But, you know, for me, where, where, where I'm judging it by the feel in my hand as much as I am by, by its retention in the pocket or how deep it sits, um, the ZT, stock ZT clip is fine. And, and it's going to be going back in there. So, yep. All right. I try to wash on my hardware a little bit in a uh, in an ultrasonic cleaning product. That's for it's for firearms. Um, I don't really need. We you know obviously we're not dissolving carbon, you know, like we would with firearm parts. But it does have an anti corrosion uh, additive to it, and I find that that sometimes if you leave parts in the washer too long um they'll they can they can stain um especially being like maximum blades i i don't put blades at all now in, in the ultra ultra sonic cleaner my poor little pair of three is 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 pretty disgusting looking now um i will be doing a video on that later on when i i do an acid acid etch and uh, stone wash on it but all right we will start this guy up hopefully it's not too loud we'll see So I will have through the magic of video. Welcome back. So we're out of the parts washers here. We're out of the sonic cleaner. Uh, your fillings are safe. I don't know about you all, but the thing is like the it feels like it's sonically removing the fillings from my head. So, so I have a hard time being in the same room with this thing when it's running. Right. And you know what? It wouldn't be any better for y'all. So generally, like I said, I have a product here. It's called, oh, it has a very imaginative name. Ultrasonic cleaning solution for gun parts. <laughs> you can find it on Amazon. Um, again, you know, there's, there isn't really any carbon deposits, any of the, the real, you know, the stuff that, that the cleaner was really intended to get off. Um, we don't really run into that kind of thing with knives, right? But what it does do is it does have a, have a, I don't see any rust or corrosion or, 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 or things that could damage, you know, the finish of my knife by using this, um. I used to use simple green and and unfortunately I had to learn my lesson the hard way. Uh, don't use simple green. Don't use uh, degreasing type products in your ultrasonic cleaner to clean your knives. If for instance, you know, you, you, you got to move on and do something else and you forget about parts, you're going to rust them. You're going to cause corrosion. Um, the one nice thing about using a cleaning solution that's specifically meant for gun parts is they generally contain, uh, you know, chemicals that help prevent corrosion. Um, and you know, you, you don't want to rust up your beauty. You don't want to, you don't want to stain the blades. You know, if you're, if you're putting your blades in there, I would, I would highly suggest you don't, um, you know, or, or mark your scales or anything like that. So, so it is a non acidic cleaner. Um, so it will not, it will not eat the finish on anode titanium. And it, it just, it does an overall good job. 
you know, it it cleans them up and we don't worry about risk and harm to our to our you know, our knives that we've spent our hard earned cash on. So yeah. So again, I I, I kind of picked a 640 because it was uh just as kind of an example, right? It's just it's just one of those knives where where you get told by by quite a few people that that they're decent knives, but only if you replace a bunch of parts on them, right? Or they would be better if they had. I tell you, you know, it, it it's it is broken into and become one of my favorite EDCs, right? I, I, I absolutely love the knife. It works fantastic. It's just the the action once it breaks in a little bit is is buttery smooth. I mean, there's just really really nothing to complain about. So yeah, you know, we just. There's just a lot more to this hobby, I think, than in the acquisition of newest, newer knives. Now, don't get me wrong, right? We're all buying knives, right? Because there's always a new knife out there. There's always the latest, greatest out there. You know, but it's always... All right, so now... Now we got everything out of the part washers. Like I said, this is just a simple service. I did a... I did a uh, just a quick touch up on the edge of it last week, so so she's good and sharp. I don't really need to worry about um, about any touch up on there. She's pretty good. Um, just do a couple little little bit extra cleaning on there. Um, I like to use a product called Impro Seven, and I like to use that product specifically because I have a lifetime supply of it. <laughs> There was a sale on a half gallon of it on Amazon one day for for uh, about forty three bucks, and I bought it, thinking, "Hey, you know, I sh I own a lot of ARs. I shoot I shoot a lot of ARs. You know, that's that's going to be a be a great product in keeping my guns clean." The problem arises in the fact that the reason I like ARs so much is I, I don't clean them all that often. I don't don't have to clean them all that often, or if, or feel the need to clean them all that often, right? I want to, you know, I have fun with my guns. I don't, I don't want to be spending all my time with them apart cleaning them. So, so that big giant bottle of Impro Seven has sat on my shelf now for about two years, and I figured it's about time to put it to some more different uses other than looking cool on the shelf. It makes an outstanding knife cleaner, and again, it's one of those products where it degreases, it cleans, but it also leaves back a, a anti-corrosive uh, coating, if you will, to protect the knife, right, and protect the parts. And we're just cleaning up all the bearing surfaces here, all the surfaces that contact parts of the washers or catch my knife. Make sure I cap my bottle so it doesn't end up all over the place. Alright, now we're gonna move on. So you'll Hopefully, as, as time moves on, I'll get a little bit smarter about where I put my hands and put the things that I have in my hands. This is kind of a different experience, right? Looking through a camera while you're doing things, or at least having a camera right in front of you while you're doing things. Uh, generally speaking, I leave the screws where they're at. You know, I don't... I don't don't generally wipe them off. I let the I let the stuff from the the sonic cleaning bath just dry on them. You know, like I said, it claims to be anti-corrosive, and I've yet to see uh, 
any evidence contrary to their claims you know the knives are or the parts that come out of there generally don't rust <laughs> and stay that way um usually uh because my knives come apart quite a bit um i'm generally touching those knives on a regular basis you know i check the screws before they go in my pockets i don't use a lot of loctite um and and i know everybody there's quite a few people that you know that loctite the hell out of everything right i i just for me um i don't i don't feel like i'm in any kind of danger or risk of losing uh losing hardware because i didn't loctite my knives right it's I, I make sure that I make sure the screws are tight and then I move on. Sorry, I'm also uh consuming my nightly allowance of oat sodas while I'm doing this. Um that was really the big reason why I kind of waited so long to do a knife channel or to or to do a video was was you know what time I have, what free time I have to, to come in here and and spend at my my bench and play with my knives and my and sharpening knives. Um, that's my time, you know. I like to put some good music on. I like to drink some some beers and and I like to play with my knives. But unfortunately, because I am a regular guy, you know, with, with a regular job, working regular hours to pay pay regular bills and 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 make sure my regular kids are wearing regular clothes. Um, I don't get a lot of, a lot of time here at the bench. And, and so this is generally my time and it's, it's my relaxing time. So, so it, it kind of took a lot of back and forth, mostly with my son, who is, you know, all into the YouTube and the TikToks and the, and the videos, um, you know, to convince me that, 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 that I should do a video or two. And you'll notice we have some flying guests. So, so. I live in a state that's hot enough to be considered a desert, but I live just right up the road from a river. So spring springtime is fly season, fly and gnat season, and keeping them out of here is, is all but impossible. So I will try not to kill any on camera for for all you that that feel extremely strongly about about cess. So so I will refrain from my normal swatting them with my 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 swatter here um so yeah i guess first we'll you know start in the reassembly we'll wipe the blade down for the, the 50th time here put in our new zirconium thumb disc here for a much more elegant look Using the titanium one. Oh, there we go. Man, perfect fit. Absolutely perfect. Now I will use a little bit of blue Loctite on the uh, on the thumb disc screw, just because that's not something that will be not just not something we'll be taking apart very often. And. It's just a thumb disc, but it is still a zirconium thumb disc, so we don't want to be losing that. These drivers I'm using right now, or at least for this, these are the Weeha Winged. Torx drivers. They're actually really nice. They're torque limiting in that you can only get a couple of fingers on there to turn it. Well, then they have this nice little straight section here to spin them fast. But I like using those for your just your bigger sizes or oddball sizes that you don't normally use. Uh, my drivers usually stay pretty you know, I use my my CRKT is for my for my T6s. You know, my Max Aces are for my T8s. And then anything bigger than that, I've got short stubbies, so I can apply a little bit more torque. But um I don't buy the sets. I get the uh I buy the contractor packs because I like to change those bits out frequently. Um 
I've seen a lot of knives or I've, I've, I've looked at a lot of knives for trades where the hardware is just absolutely just wretchedly boogered because they've been cranking on that same five-year-old, you know, T8 bit for the, you know, until it's, it's almost rubbed out to nothing. And, and every knife that little bit touches just, just gets wrecked, right? The minute I start seeing burrs on them bits, they go in the trash and I pull another one. Uh, Weha is nice, is nice in that they sell large contractor packs of their T6 and T8 uh, drivers, which are the two that you most commonly are going to, you know, use. Um, so the minute those things start looking the, the least bit, you know, scuffed up, they go in the trash. They go in the trash and, and, and you know, they get replaced. I mean, hardware can be you know next to impossible to get replacement hardware so so you want to protect that especially if you're taking your knives apart on the regular to clean them out you know you you definitely want to protect protect that hardware because you, you you might not be able to get replacements for it you know a big modification for this knife is is complete right we've Putting the uh, putting a new thumb disc on there. All right, we'll get the whole thing put back together. But yeah, so like I guess in you know, and and I and I do plan on putting reviews. You know, I, I obviously I buy knives, right? And and I do have some some opinions on those knives. Um, I, you know, I, I will, I will try to, I, I will try to make it about those, those knives specifically, right? And, and not about the, the makers behind those knives, you know, if there's controversy, but, but I would definitely like in the future to just, to, to do a little bit more on, I guess, the story behind those knives, right? The stories behind the people who make those knives, I think they're they're of interest. You know, I think they're of interest to most of us. I would I would hope. So we will get this knife put back together, and then hopefully we will close this extremely long for me at least video out. Um, like I said, please don't, well, I was going to say, please don't judge this channel by this video, but it's my first video. And if you don't judge my channel by this video, you probably won't come back. So I would say I've got more planned for the future. I've got some really nice knives, at least in my opinion, that we can talk about. And I've got some knives with some cool technology that I think gets passed by, um, not looked at. Definitely one of the videos I'll be doing here in the future will be a replacement of the mainspring on a Spyderco Autonomy 2, you know, and which is, in my opinion, one of the finest auto knives ever ever manufactured. Um, specifically, because it was designed with the intent of the user to be able to do factory services on it to be able to replace your mainsprings you can buy a kit direct from spyderco that comes with two new two new mainsprings the tool to to disassemble it some loctite a new pivot screw and a blade uh, edge protector um, it is an auto that has some very, very unique features to it, other than its user serviceability. And I would really like to bring those to light because I really, I really feel that that knife never gets a fair review, right? It's always it's got a big ugly button, you know. <laughs> it's got this weird thing on the side at the pivot, you know. And and I really just think it's it's, you know, with kind of the drive-by reviews that 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 our knife channel, most knife channels do, we just we lose a lot of the, the little features, right? You get lost in the noise. And a lot of times those little features are what are what make the knife, right? 
they're what make that knife a knife that you want. They're, 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 you know, one or two little features are one thing, but they accumulate, you know, and, and eventually you just kind of go, well, that's a fantastic knife, right? Because, you know, it's, 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 it's based on all the little details. And since knives are little, right, the little details count. So we're putting the factory clip back on, right? I'm, you know, I, like I said, I have Lynch on, you know, a couple dozen knives. Love Lynch's clips. It just, that deep carry, that deep carry clip for me just does not work on this knife. I think this knife's uh, big strong points are that it is a nice, sleek, slim knife in my pocket. It, 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 it's slim and sleek in the hands. And I just think that deep carry hump on the back of it just takes takes something away from that. So back to the factory clip, which I don't think is really that bad and completely complements the design of the knife. You know, slightly darker color. I, I dig it. Um, the other nice thing about, I, you know, I really appreciate knives, man, with, 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 with one-sided pivots, right? You know, there's only one screw on one side that you gotta you gotta think with. All right. All right. So you will see me use this lubrication quite a bit. Uh, I got it on again on Amazon. It's Liberty. Uh, it is 100% synthetic high speed bearing lubricant. It is slightly more, a little bit, a little bit more viscous than uh, than than. And knife pivot oil is right, but it stays in place, right? It, it it the problem I've had with with a lot of those those lighter weight, you know, knife pivot lubes, right? Uh, everybody's got for twenty dollars for the tiny little eyedropper size bottle, right? The big problem I've had with those is is they're too thin. And knives that you flick open, knives that where you, you know, you're using a, a bit of kinetic energy to snap open. I don't know if it's that lube is getting flung out or, or what, um, or, you know, exactly what it's doing. But it just, it doesn't last. You know, I get a couple of days with like that silky smooth action and then that's it. Right, it, it it goes away. It goes back to feeling like you're you're on a dry pivot again. Um, this stuff here, I think, is originally you know it was marketed in the smaller bottles, right? But it's marketed for like roller skate bearings or something. I think is is what it's marketed for. Um, the stuff just works, right? And for what you pay for a tiny little, you know. I drop her bottle of KPL. I got that, you know, a, essentially a lifetime supply, right? It's like 14 bucks, but it works awesome. Um, no, no odd smell, um, which, which I've encountered with a couple of different four knife lube, you know, lubes. Um, it stays where you want it to stay. There's no corrosion. The stuff just works amazingly well. And you get a big giant bottle for 15 bucks, right? And it's not, you know, I, I know it's not the Gucci oil, but it works. It works really well for, for, for what it is. So. And what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for the, the sides of the washers that are shiny or have the little shiny scratches in them because that's usually the blade side of the of the washer there a little bit of lube on both sides of the washer and we can go ahead and put our other plate back on so this is a little bit more fidgety of a knife to assemble it's got a little bit more hardware than your and then an average, I mean, it's no 80, 20.5, but, but it does have a little bit more hardware than the average knife. Right. 
T6s, all screws, if I didn't mention it, I'm pretty sure I didn't. Uh, all screws, body screws have been T6s. The pivot was a T8, and the thumb disc is a T10. So, just in case you were wondering. I encountered, I finally disassembled a knife uh, yesterday that had something other than <laughs> those three th sizes, and it was a T20, which was odd, and I had to go out and dig through my tool bag to find a bit that big. All right. So the body hardware, as you've seen, is hidden. Right, it's hidden behind these what we call appliques. Right. So these two outer screws are just to hold the appliques on. And then one of my favorite setups so being right-handed i like having the pivot adjustment screw opposite of the pocket clip don't know why but that's just my preference so a lot of times i'll get spider codes and they will have the adjustment side of the pivot will be on the clip side as opposed to the show side I will just swap that over. Most of your spider codes already have the little, the little flat spot on both sides of the of the of the liners, so that so that you can do that. So we'll do a little bit of adjustment. Let's see where we're we're at. That pivot's way too tight. But I like to go from there. Feels a lot better. She's centered. She flicks. She's absolutely solid. No wiggle. I can probably go another little quarter turn lighter. Another little wiggle. Drop her. Oh. Move her up just a bit. Now let's take a look. Centered. Drop. Perfect. All right. So. That is our 0640. With our gray precision. Monster thumb stud for the 0640. Mr. Pete Gray, really good at communications. Um, I think the zirconia disc cost me with shipping right at 45 bucks. The titanium disc with shipping cost me 25. And just so that you can see the difference between the stock and the monster disc sizes here. You can see that the monster disc is actually monstrously big, but it does improve like the feel of the action, at least for flicking the blade. You know, if you're a thumb flicker, it does, it does make a difference, right? You do feel it. It does make, make, make deployment a lot, a lot easier. Um, you don't dig your fingernail into the edge of that disc as much as you did with the small, with the stock size. Um, is so you know if you're getting if you're getting daily manicures and you don't want to you don't want to mess up your nails uh the monster disc would probably be a be a good option for you so that's it you know I, again i don't know why they, i like that green and black carbon fiber it just kind of goes with the knife and now with that zirconium thumb disc it just yeah it just fits man 
All right, so this has been a long video, or it's been a long video for me. Um, hopefully, I'll be ed editing down all the, you know, a substantial amount of it. Um, nobody wants to sit through and and watch me, you know, twiddle my thumbs for for an hour and a half. Um, but I hope you come back. You know, I I I hope you're with me here in the next video and the next video after that. Uh, I'm just figuring this stuff out. You know. And you're, you, you, unfortunately, you guys have to be the beta testers until I get it down. Um, but, but we'll create some content, man. We'll create some good content. And if you've got some, some, some suggestions or ideas for content, you know, put them down in the, put them down in the chat. You know, if it's to go f myself and drink a beer, well, then I'll go f myself and drink a beer. But, but uh, I'm gonna make some more knife videos. If for nothing else, it's a, it's a. It's kind of therapeutic, you know. I don't, I don't have any knife friends. I don't do the knife forums because I don't, I don't appreciate the toxicity that's that's there, for the most part. Um, and so, I, so I kind of live in a knife vacuum. Um, and and so, you know, it'd be nice to have friends vicariously, you know, through 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 the YouTube. Um, so that's that's really about it. You know, thank you guys for watching. If you watched it all the way to the end, and I. Hope to see you again here in a few days for the next video. All right, Regular Knife Guy signing out.